Dear friends, let's see now the last chapter of this series dedicated to idiopathic membrane and macular edema, and we come to the crucial point, the peeling itself. Before we begin, let's see some general considerations. You will have to remove a structure of 6 micron thick, 1 micron for ILM and 5 microns for Müller cell hand feet, plus a few microns of astrocytic proliferation posterior haloid. You will then remove a structure 10 times thinner than a hair. What does that mean? First, use the visualization system that will give you the best separating power, a plano-concave lens. Learn how to work with the highest magnification of the microscope and focus constantly. Decrease your trembling. To do that, release your shoulders by pushing them toward the ground and hold your forceps with your left hand. And finally, to keep the focus, Put the infusion on as soon as your forceps is in the eye to avoid hypotonia that would make you vary the focus. By cons, of course, stop the infusion every time you go out of the eye, not to engage the vitus in the plugs, even if they are valved. Let's see now the instrumentation. Given the size of what you need to remove, choose the perfect instrument. When I say perfect, I mean that their characteristics must meet exactly what you expect and allow you permanent control of what you do. Let's take two examples of fundamental instruments. First, the forceps. It must it must have a perfect confrontation of its most distal hand to be able to pinch with precision of membrane of 1 to 2 microns. If you choose a crocodile forceps, ensure that the distal jaws are occluded before the teeth further back, so that tissue debris trapped in the jaws does not prevent the distal closure. The forceps must have a high griping force and must have its lateral edge formed so as not to tear on the sides of its jaws. Second instrument, the peak, which is also an important instrument when you are facing the hyloid and cannot identify its edges. The peak, to be safe, must be extremely sharp. If it does not enter the fibers with ease, it will force to press on the retina, which will create a retinal fold in front of it and allow it to enter perpendicular to this fold in full retina. Personally, I like the sharpness of a needle whose hand is curved, taking care not to touch the tip presenting the beaver facing the retina so that the rounded edge lifts the slice of tissue without cutting them. Do not use the Tano diamond scraper whose edges are not controlled and which can cut off the plane of the axone so uh, that it exposes when the ILM is removed. On which surface should the ILM be removed? This is a difficult question. First, try to remove all the haloid plaques located in the arch of the temporal vessels. Indeed, as we have seen, there may be astrocytic reproliferation if the ischemia persists. If this is the case, a contraction of the remaining plaques may result in foveal ectopia. As for the ILM, I have difficulty answering you. On one hand, 
It is known that a very limited unintentional ablation made during the removal of the poster haloid may be sufficient to cause satisfactory restorative reactions, but instinctively, I suppose that a wider ablation will generate a more important reaction. In addition, a wide alien peeling is still one of the best ways to be sure having removed at least all the hybrid fibers. <clears throat> so I advise you to remove at least two-thirds of the distance between the fovea and the temporal vessels. Where will you start? Easier to say where it's better not to start. On the fovea? the anterior macula raffae for obvious reasons, the areas near the vascular arcade where the ILM is very adherent, the areas where the marking by Kumasi by in blue shows that there was a spontaneous tearing of the ILM as we saw in the previous chapter, and finally the areas where there are faults because with a peak you can enter the retina perpendicularly and with the forceps you will have difficulty controlling the thickness of what you grasp. Generally speaking, I tend to advise to start at a place where you feel comfortable in the hand position and orientation of your instrument. It is better to start close to the macula if you control your movements well and fur than further away if this area does not allow you perfect control due to a poor pupillary dilatation, crystalline lens opacities or simply because you are not at your hand. But of course, these simple recommendations are only valid if you are in the case of a pure edema. If there is hyaluroid, if you are in the case of an idiopathic membrane, things will be less stereotyped because the layout, extent, location and appearance of the hyaluroid plaque will also interfere in the choice of the starting area as well as in the technique you will use. This is why, for more simplicity, we will consider the gestures according to the different clinical cases you may encounter. The simplest case as we have seen, is when there is no adherent posterior haloid, as shown by the uniformly blue coloring of the Kumasi blue. This can occur either in case of pure edema or after you have removed the posterior haloid. You are directly facing the structure that you want to remove without having to take into account any haloid plaque. In fact, you are in the same situation as with an anterior capsule at the beginning of the FECO. And besides, the technique I will recommend you is that of a capsulorexis with forceps. At high magnification of the microscope, you very superficially pinch an area of retina without fault. Under the effect of pinching, you see a small blue fold in the axis of your jaws. You then make small movement aside, parallel to retinal plane. As the ILM is the only rigid structure of the retina, <coughs> it will detach itself from the underlying tissues. You will then make a movement more important that will tear the ILM. It is from this tear that you will turn around the macula in a snail spiral to make your axis, always going from the detached area to the adherent area. Sometimes the tear you've created when you pinch is too small and you will want to increase its length to get a wider spiral turn. 
As for a capsular axis, you will need from time to time to take the detached flap closer to its insertion, first to become to better control your action, but also to prevent your forceps from touching the retina at a distance from the rexis. The removed structure, composed of ILM and Muller cell hand feet, will appear in the middle of the eye as a transparent cellophane membrane with raw edges. Here are two examples of rexis on the left in venous occlusion and on the right in diabetes. Conversely, there are cases where the posterior pole is completely covered with hyoid. This can happen either when the PVD has not yet occurred and you have not taken off the hyoid as indicated in Chapter 6, or in case of vitreous schizis. Kumasi blue does not stain anything at all, since it does not stain the posterior hyoid. Between you and the island, therefore, a mattress of hyoid fibers is placed. As seen on Anapat cut, these hyoid fibers have no cohesion and have no cleavered plane. Sometimes they appear to insert into the retina, which may explain why spontaneous PVD may leave adherent hyoid remnants. Sometimes they appear to be attached to the ILM, which explains why a simple therapeutic posterior hyaluronic detachment can tear off the ILM and the gliosis. Anyway, the forceps will catch fibers that will tear off individually from each other, and you will feel like you are catching chewing gum without cons consistency. You would like to be able to grab a larger amount of fiber to have a greater pulling force, but it's difficult to do so with the forceps. Of course, in the long run, enough more contiguous tufts of fibers can be removed to arrange a more or less correct access to the island, but it takes time. Personally, I advise you to, get, to create a plane of cleavage with a very sharp peak or a curved needle in order to separate a block of fibers. You can then take the whole thickness of this block with the forceps as you grab the edge of an adhesive plaque and make your axis. Once the halide removed, you will be careful to re-inject island blue and you will discover that, in most cases, a tear of the island have been created due to a too strong entanglement between the halide and the carpal ILM glial cells. This confirms that it is illusory to compare the result of the surgery with or without ILM peeling unless the integrity of di or disappearance of the ILM is checked with the Kuma C. Brian Blue. Here is another example. Anyway, if you see an unintentional tear of the ILM, you can naturally continue the axis of the ILM as seen previously from this tear. If there is no visible tear, pinch the ILM as just, as just indicated. 
Between these two extreme cases are the most frequent cases of idiopathic epirotal membrane, where the Kumasi blue coloration shows you a juxtaposition of uncolored halide island and colored areas of pure ILM. All distribution can be seen from the simple isolated hybrid island to a true mosaic of many islets. You then have two ways to take your island peeling, either by removing the hybrid islands first and then make your island rexis, or to remove both at the same time. Some things will guide you in deciding. Sometimes a hybrid flap is obviously detached. It is then so easy to remove the hybrid plaque that you will not hesitate to do so, going, as always, from the detached part to the adherent area, as one does to remove a wallpaper from the wall or a label of its support. Sometimes the hybrid plaque has very well marked edges. You will then do according to your habits and whether or not this edge in a place easy to grasp. When, after removing it, you hold the posterior haloid with your forceps, the specimen appears shriveled as opposed to the pure island. If the plaque is small, no need to re-inject dye, but if it is larger, it's good to check with the blue of Kumasi if there is not an ILM tear caused by the haloid removal. If the edge of the plaque is arciform, be careful not to succumb to the willing to grasp the plaque in the middle of the arc, unless you have first released the two anchors surrounding the arc. Otherwise, these two anchors will be located behind your forceps. You would not go from the detached area to the adherent area and you could create tears. I prefer in this case to start my rexis in pure ILM behind the two anchors that will be removed with everything else by the same movements from the detached area to the adherent area. In fact, you have understood that my preference is for rexis which at the same time removes the ILM and the overlying hybrid plaque. For this, I advise you to start either in the temple side of the plaque or between the plaque and the temple vessels. Here is a first example with a temple start. Once an ILM tear has been created, extend it parallel to the plaque to obtain a wide turn capable of carrying everything in its path. Here is a second example with a start between the plaque and the upper arcade. Sometimes you cannot continue the snail in the same direction and you have to know how to reverse direction in order to avoid tearing the rexis. You will then succeed to finish without taking out the forceps.
A word now about the peeling complications. Do not really worry about the small petechia that will occur during your peeling. At the limit, it must comfort you in the idea that you are actually removing the mullous cell and feet, which, with the astrocytes, are located just above the superficial capillaries. The next morning, there will be no trace of these bleedings. During the pinching of the ILM, you may have two problems either to make a micro tear. or to make a vascular injury. In both cases, make sure that you have completely removed the hyoid around the lesion to avoid any traction on each edges. If the bleeding persists, slightly increase the intraocular pressure and compress the vessel for 10 to 20 seconds with your probe to perform hemostasis. No need for retinoplexy for tearing, bleeding, a simple injection of air will be sufficient. All right, so we have finished this topic on macular membrane and edema. Thank you for your patience and sorry for my English. We will meet again on YouTube to speak about retinal detachment. See you.